Today's project, we're going to be showing you guys how to replace a wheel bearing on a GM vehicle. This happens to be a 2004 Pontiac Grand Prix. However, this process is the same for various other models and manufacturers. There's some necessary tools that you'll need for each step. We'll walk through the required tools on each individual step, but I want to show you guys how easily you can do this at home yourself with very minimal tools. All right, so to get things started here, if you're not sure if your wheel bearing is bad, nine times out of 10, when one of these goes bad, when you're driving down the road, you'll hear it howling as the wheel rotates on the interstate. On this scenario here, it does that a little bit, but it also has a lot of movement here. So this is another way where you can tell that this hub and this wheel bearing is going bad. And typically on most cars nowadays, the wheel bearing and the hub is compressed together in one unit. So you replace the unit as one unit there. After you have the vehicle jacked up, obviously make sure you have some jack stands under there as well and some wheel chocks on your wheels. You can go ahead and remove the wheel. All right, so now we're ready to remove the caliper. To do this, you just got two bolts back here, and these are a 14 millimeter. Sometimes you need to compress the caliper with a C-clamp if it's on there tight enough. You should be able to tell after you get these off if you need to do that or not. We'll go ahead and loosen up these two bolts. We'll take our caliper hanger here we'll just clip it on here and then we'll just hang it up here to get it out of the way next we're going to be removing this bracket here to do that there's just two 13 millimeter bolts on the back Then this bracket and the rotor should pop right off. All right, so now that we have the brakes out of the way, you can see this is the part that we're gonna be replacing. Here's a new one here. And as you can see there, there's that movement that I was showing you earlier on the wheel. As you can see on our new one, it does not move at all. So you can tell 100% that is what's causing our issue. To remove this, now this specific model here does not have anti-lock brakes. If your vehicle has anti-lock brakes, it's going to be slightly different. There's going to be wires coming out of this and it's just the speed sensors. So you need to make sure you're looking at that and you have to disconnect those as well. But on this one here, it does not have it so we don't have to worry about. And also, this is the rear of the vehicle. If you're doing it on the front wheel drive vehicle, the process is a little bit different. Well, you have to remove the axle. If you guys watch my other video out there on removing a GM axle, I talk about removing the axle. If you follow that process to remove the axle and this process to remove the wheel hub, it's very similar except the bolts here are on this side on a front wheel drive. The wheel bearing bolts are going to be on the back side, but the process is essentially the same. All right, so to get these four bolts removed, it's just going to be a 10 millimeter. And you'll notice these little holes right here. You can use these to access those. Or if you don't have those on your hub, a lot of times you can get an open end wrench or a pivoting socket in there and you can access those bolts as well. So now that we have the bolts out, we're ready to remove this. Just one note I'll make here real quick. If this is a front wheel drive vehicle, it's a little bit harder to remove it. A lot of times what I use is one of these slide hammers and you can essentially put this on here and you can use your slide hammer to pull it out of there. On this one here, because it's on the outside, it's an exposed and you're replacing this part anyways. A lot of times you can just get a hammer and bang on it right here and this should pop right out. All right, so I'll give you a close up here real quick. I'm not sure if you can pick that up, but you can definitely hear that noise rattle around in there. 
and also when you're rotating it there you can hear it that humming noise we come over here to our new one there's no movement over there and as you can see it's rotating perfectly quiet there so just line up your parts just verify you got the right parts then you're ready to install it next thing we want to do is just take a wire brush and come in here and remove all of that debris you don't want any of that getting in the middle of there because that's going to have to fit in there very tightly in order to get it sealed in there correctly And we'll go ahead and just wipe that clean in there. All right, so now we're ready to install it. Just make sure you're putting your brake shield back on there correctly. Your caliper is going to sit over here, so that hole needs to be like that. Line up your wheel hub with those holes. And you're going to thread your bolts back in there. Now, pay attention to the specific model you're doing. Sometimes they use torque to yield bolts on these. If you have torque to yield bolts on any of these parts, make sure you're replacing the bolt as well. Now, don't completely tighten it with your impact. I just did that to get it seated in there. You next need to make sure we're torquing those to the right spec. The torque here is gonna be 55 foot-pounds. Alright, so now we got our bearing back on there. Now we can go ahead and reinstall the brakes. Alright, so we'll put our caliper and our bracket back up here. Now, if your brakes look like this, I recommend replacing them. You know, obviously you get these things taken apart. It's just as easy to put new ones on here versus use these old ones. I'll install these old ones here just to show you the process. So we get that lined up. Then you're going to take your caliper bracket bolts and you'll thread those in there. Then the torque on these is going to be 96 foot-pounds. So after you get both of those torqued, then you can move on to your caliper. Now this is where it would help if you did compress this caliper, it wouldn't go on as tight layer. So, you know, just play that by ear. If you can't get in there, just compress the caliper a little bit. Eventually you'll get it in there. And go ahead and just thread your caliper bolts in there.
So then the torque on these last two bolts is just going to be 25 foot pounds. And now you can see we've easily completed that job. Just confirm you've got everything tight on there. Go ahead and put your wheel and your lug nuts back on there. Then you've completed your job successfully there. So hopefully this helped you out here today. If it did, please give me the thumbs up. If you're interested in more content like this, please hit that subscribe. But again, I hope this helped you out and thanks for watching.